the big three on the weather board that I'm tracking for you is going to be the heat that starts to build over the next few days and then really intensifies as we close out July and enter August. That also means that we're talking about a severe weather threat on the northern periphery of this huge heat dome that is, again, building across most of the country. And then there's the tropics. There are several waves that I am tracking, but does that mean that hurricane season is waking up. I'm gonna have the time codes in the descriptions. If you are just here for the tropics, that's gonna to be towards the end of the video, but you can zip along if you would like, if you're just interested in the tropical update. What's going on guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, and if you wanna join the best weather community on the internet, hit that subscribe button. We call ourselves the garbage crew because we take out the trash and all of that misinformation and hype when it comes to the weather on social media and online. So we'd love to have you on board to help sniff out all of that garbage. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from and what the weather is doing. We're gonna get back into this right away. This is the surface map starting off today and where we're watching for Monday, July 21st of your weather risk. It's coming with this cold front slicing across Montana. So this is gonna be the one risk area. We have a dying thunderstorm complex moving through the Twin Cities of Minnesota. That's gonna to continue to fizzle out as it pushes into Wisconsin. We also have along this warm front, flood threat associated with this uh, also dying complex of thunderstorms. They use that front kind of as a pathway there. And then in the deep south, really across the southeast corner of the United States, we have this cluster of thunderstorms. Now, this is the one that we were talking about last week in our videos that is partially infused with what was left of the moisture of Invest 93L. It's not all associated with it. We also have this cold front right here, and that's kind of injecting its own thunderstorms. But a piece of the ghost of 93L, if you will, kind of went up and around and met up with that. It's mostly, though, this new cold front. So when you hear that Invest 93L is coming back for seconds, it's partially related, but it's mostly because of that cold front right there sparking up another several rounds of thunderstorms. Okay, so I mentioned the heat, and we saw it really build across the southeast corner of the U.S. For most in Florida, parts of Georgia, Alabama, it was the hottest stretch of summer so far. Now, this is going to expand deep into the nation's midsection, and over the next couple of days and the next 7 to 10 days, it is really going to build. So what we have happen, we had this big chunk of high pressure over the North Gulf. It kind of goes out here and then button hooks back. It's going to be blazing hot, as I'll show you the forecast in just one second, through the nation's heartland over the next couple of days. But that's basically nothing to what's coming. Look at the date there. Toward the last couple of days of July, we're talking about temperatures really surging into the triple digits. For that, I want to show you the temperatures over the next couple of days now. This is going to be a uh, building. St. Louis, again, we're hot today. It's nothing crazy. We're kind of on the northern edge of that. We're at 89 in St. Louis, 97 in Wichita. It's always hot in the desert southwest. We have triple-digit heat still blazing hot across the southeast corner of the United States. Now, one thing that I do want to point out as we build this kind of heat dome right down in through here Storms tend to fire along the northern periphery of these building heat domes. They're called, it's called the ring of fire pattern because around the ring of sunny and super hot air, you get these thunderstorms to fire up, and that's why it's called the ring of fire. So we're looking for storms kind of in that direction. So let me take you to tomorrow first, and then I'll show you the severe weather risk for the next couple of days. Here we go on Wednesday, and you see now in St. Louis – that heat nudges further to the north, and now we're in the mid to upper 90s, uh, closing in on triple-digit heat from Omaha to Wichita to Oklahoma City, and then, of course, still hot in the desert southwest. It's feeling very nice in Boston, Syracuse. Again, this heat is not reaching us this time around. Now, on the northern end of this, I'll show you future radar to, bark this, uh, to, break, the, to bark this down. To break this down, um... This is the severe weather risk for today. This is Monday, July 21st, and you see the level 2 out of 5, that slight risk from about Billings to Bismarck to just north of Rapid City, the level 1 out of 5 uh, from just east of Denver to the Twin Cities of Minnesota to Fargo, North Dakota, and then back to the west of Billings closer to Missoula. That's going to be because of that cold front, some of that colder air running into that warmer air that we showed you. Moving into tomorrow, it's the same kind of area as that dome of heat builds and pushes to the north. 
that's going to keep the severe weather threat mainly to the north. We also have another area in the southeast, including about Jacksonville to Atlanta. That's going to be because of that complex of thunderstorms that's hanging out over uh, the northern tier of the country. So here's where we stand today. This is going to be the high resolution future radar that I'm going to show you in almost every video now because it does a very good job of giving you the sense of where nasty weather can happen and impactful weather to you can happen. So you see the pop-up storms from about north of El Paso to Denver, back into Utah, the really nasty stuff across the northern tier of Minnesota, closer to Ely and International Falls. There we go, 8 o'clock Monday evening. Look at the nasty stuff here. We'll take a closer look. We'll zoom in. This is the severe weather threat today from about Great Falls to east of Billings. Again, uh, also on the Dakota border with Montana, the Dakota's border with uh, Montana and Wyoming. Let's take this out further and watch that complex of storms roll through. And notice how it gets bigger. We saw that slight risk area. That as it approaches Fargo, western Minnesota. Uh, so watch out again. Heads up toward Alexandria, Fargo, Grand, For uh, Grand Forks in the mix. Now let me zoom this back out because we're starting to get into tomorrow and we have that decent severe weather risk, that low end severe weather risk across the southern tier of the country. You're going to watch that thing try to spiral in a little bit and flare up a thunderstorms um, around Jacksonville, the panhandle of Florida. Note again, there's a lot going on across the country. So I'll try to mention everybody and not cover up California. That's my friend in Southern California that said I kept on covering you guys. So I made sure at your request that my big head doesn't cover up anybody across the country. So kind of just look around and just find your spot and watch these storms come through because I can't call out everybody. The video would take four hours. So there we go with the storm complex rolling in the northern Michigan, parts of Wisconsin, and then also those storms that are sliding in courtesy of that disturbance or blob thing that we have rolling into the southeast corner of the United States. If you are still with me, hit that thumbs up button. If you happen to like this content, I would love for you to stick around a little bit. If you need to sleep on it again, hitting that thumbs up button will do just fine for now. But I would love to have you on board. Uh, please consider joining this uh, best weather team. I need more eyes out there. You guys are awesome at giving the weather reports. It gives ground truth to the forecast that we all put together. And again, I would love to spot that misinformation that I might miss. I saw one yesterday that said a tropical storm was coming into the Caribbean. No way, Jose. I don't think so. And we're going to talk about why that is right now in our tropical update. And one thing I want to be clear is they, this guy literally said that a tropical storm was forecast to come into the Caribbean. No, no, no. Some models had newly designated Invest 94 reaching tropical storm status, but make, make no mistake about it, there is no official forecast saying a tropical storm is coming into the Caribbean. This is some of the garbage that I'm talking about here because I want to make sure that my friends in the Caribbean and across the United States don't get bad information and freak out when there's no reason to freak out. I want you to make sure you're paying attention to good information, and that's why we call ourselves the Garbage Crew here. So again, hit that subscribe button if you'd love to find that misinformation. This is it right here. This is Invest 94L, and I mentioned before, let me get this chicken scratch off of here. This is an open wave, so follow the wave pattern or the lines here. That is the wind direction, so that is not a closed circulation. If this was going to be a tropical disturbance yet, it would be tight like this, okay? It's not. It's a open wave just like that. So can we kind of draw that axis like that? So that is our tropical wave that is moving to the Lesser Antilles. Yes, it is going to bring you guys rain in Trinidad and Tobago and St. Lucia and Martinique and Dominica and the rest of the Windward Islands, okay? But in terms of this thing getting its act together, I don't think so. So that is 94L. There's also this guy back here, another wave. This one's actually more of a close. I don't know why my thing keeps on getting uh, <laughs> keeps on getting wider. But there is more of a elongated circulation. There's not much thunderstorm activity with it. Now, this guy here, that is juicy. That is a big tropical wave. So we're going to take a look at this. We're going to bring up now 
um, the computer forecast. This is going to be the European ensembles, courtesy of weathernerds.com. So if you uh, are a weather nerd or weather geek like us, again, this is a great tool to kind of look up the European ensembles. So that's what we're going to look at. Ensemble forecast, by the way, it's what you want to look at when you don't have a ton of information on these things. And we don't because we're in the middle of the ocean. Different initial conditions are put into these guys. And when you have a bunch of the members of this ensemble showing a similar solution, you get a little more confidence in an outcome. So here is the storm or the deal we were just looking uh, looking at. That's Invest 94L. It has a few members trying to develop, and there we go going through and then just kind of petering out in what we call the tropical graveyard. The Eastern Caribbean is notorious for crushing storms. Not always, of course. We've had strong storms move through Barrel uh, last year through the Eastern Caribbean. But nonetheless, when the Atlantic is kind of hostile, it's even more hostile there. So that was 94L dying a very quick death, bringing us some rain to the islands. Uh, you only see a few members latching on. So here's our next storm, that one that we were watching that had no convection with it, the second one. A lot of the European ensembles are on. Now, let me go back to that real quick, because as I mentioned before, it does have a pretty decent circulation. There's not a lot of thunderstorms with it. But it does, it's, it's elongated, so it's not tropical, but it is, it's certainly looking a little bit better than that one. And then keep in mind that juicy guy hanging back there as we watch the next model run. So this is the secondary one. See a lot more L's with it. Let me change the color of my Telestrator so it stands out. A lot more L's with it, meaning that there's a lot more members of the European Ensemble that are trying to develop that one. So that would be the one I would think that we would need to pay a closer attention to. It does bring it into the islands a little bit. Some of them, again, the on this particular map anyway, when you see the brighter colors, like the orange there and the green, that constitutes um, that wind scale up there. So, I mean, like one of the members does have a hurricane. That's one of the members of a European ensemble. I would, again, we're not freaking out over this one. There's still a lot of stuff working against the tropical Atlantic right now. So let me get my Telestrator off here and let's take a look at that juicy one. And that is the juicy one. That third one right there, you see those L's popping up? So it's on it. The European ensembles have it right there one of the things that i'm going to say is last year at this time we had models looking just like this and they did not come into fruition thankfully here is what's going on in the atlantic right now the dust isn't the end-all be-all to crush anything okay but when it's out there, it's hard for these things to really maintain moisture around the center to help get these things going. So 94L is kind of hanging out in this region, give or take, somewhere in here. The other one's kind of back here, and then the other one is coming off low. So, I mean, they are kind of missing the dust a little bit, but as that pushes forward, there's more dry, dusty air to meet up with it. There's also a little more wind shear in the Eastern Caribbean that once they try to enter there, if the dust didn't get it, the wind shear will. So, my point with these is we are watching... The Atlantic is still relatively stable. Now, there's something pushing through known as a Kelvin wave. And it's basically, we, we talk about the MJO a lot as being like this convective pulse on a large scale that gets air to rise and then create some thunderstorms. There is going to be a Kelvin wave. Uh, it does kind of a very similar thing on a much smaller scale, but it'll be passing through the Atlantic at that time. And that may help to force up some thunderstorms and may help to give that little circulation or very stretched out circulation a little more oomph so that is why, in the short term, we're going to watch number two, I think, the most, 
as it goes through. It has a little bit of ac extra help to help defend off some of the very hostile conditions. And again, hostile means not good for the storm, good for us. So when I say hostile, it's not hype. I got accused of that once. I called it hostile for development, but no, no, no. It's supposed to be the other way around. It's hostile for the storm, good for us. So again, if I ever use hostile conditions, it's hostile for the storms that are trying to develop. So that's what I have for you today. Again, going to be watching those trailing waves because they have a little bit of extra help from that Kelvin wave passing through. But I'm not sure that this is the start of a super active period just yet. We may have to wait for another MJO passage toward the climatological peak of hurricane season sometime in the middle of September before like the floodgates open and we see the flurry of activity. One thing that we talked about in our early as I sometimes I ramble on like this so so bear with me but this is just a little bit of extra stuff to kind of tie this all in on the tropical front we mentioned that one of the things that we'd be watching for in our hurricane season outlook was homegrown storms like what we've seen a couple of times sloppy central uh, Atlantic storms like we saw with Andrea and so far it's it's kind of played out how we thought and then the question that I posed in there was are we going to have a quiet August like we had last year? Because some of the same factors, the extra stability when the air is when the atmosphere is stable, it's hard to get thunderstorms to develop and thrive and all that stuff. Um, but that was the question that I kind of posed to everybody and myself because I just it was April when we made that forecast, wasn't sure what was going to happen. But there we go, it's August and it's still looking pretty stable, all things considered. So we're going to watch those two waves. I'm not overly confident that this is kind of the opening of the floodgates just yet. It might be about a month away, that'll six weeks away, and it might be kind of that back half action that what we saw last year kind of repeat performance again uh, for the 2025 hurricane season. Thank you guys for hanging around. Thank you guys for being here and for the support. Welcome to all the new subscribers, and I appreciate the efforts of all of the long-term subscribers again as we continue to take down hype and take down misinformation on this weather channel that's why this channel is here and of course because it's a spot for all of us to talk about the weather which if you're here i think you like we'll catch you next time